to tell you a story. I was in my car getting ready to rehearse uh, for Marlin's review. <coughs> and I said the first line, I don't like Finding Nemo. I don't like Finding Nemo. I don't... And my sunroof exploded. Even the gods are Finding Nemo fans. I know that Dory is one of the most beloved characters of all time, but the idea that we shouldn't criticize something because it's popular just... It doesn't make any sense to me. If a character's popular, it just means they're all the more influential. We should be taking a closer look at them, not leaving them alone. So, before we get all serious, here are the titles with some happy music! I know I feel better. Let's take a look at Dory's introductory scene. Oh, oh, oh sorry! He's gone. he's gone. There, there. No, he's gone. It's all right. He's gone. It'll be okay. Hey, I've seen a boat! You have? Wait! Will you quit it? What? What, the ocean isn't big enough for you or something like that? You're showing me which way the boat went! Hey. I've seen a boat. Well, that's one way to introduce your character. This is why I didn't make a list. I, I tried to make a list. It, it, it didn't go well. A boat? Hey! I've seen a boat. See, I, I suffer from short term memory loss. How does she remember the boat? Short term memory loss. I can't help but wonder why. Why the short term memory loss? It runs in my family. Well,. I mean, at least I think it does. Um, hmm. Where are they? Amnesia. Why? Because backstory's too much of a pain. Why on earth would we give Dory a backstory? Where was she going? She was doing something with her life. She was going somewhere, doing something, had something to do. <gasps> well, hi! Hi! She doesn't even... how does that even... And how'd you mortals like to come to a little... a little get-together I'm having? Whoa, I love parties! That sounds like fun! Tori doesn't even know that sharks eat fish! You know, parties are fun, and it's tempting, but we can't because... Oh, come on, I insist! Okay, he's either drunk or insane. The more I try to interpret this scene into something in real life, the more it just seems like a really bad idea. Kids, if you're ever out late and you're approached by a big-ass lunatic with pointy teeth and he's, like, insane, and he invites you to a party in his submarine, run the other way! I mean, we're working with anthropomorphism here. Is it a shark? Or is it a creepy guy at night in a back alley or something? What's a couple of bites like you doing out so late? <laughs> it can't be both! I'm Dory. Hello, Hi, Dory. Dory. And uh, well, well, I don't, I don't think I've ever eaten a fish. <laughs> Hi, that's incredible. Good, Good on you, mate. <sighs> I'm glad I got that off my chest. See, Dory is a friend of the world. She would never dream of judging others based on preconceptions or stereotypes, like all sharks eat fish. Never. Guys, being friendly and unassuming is not the same as being naive and stupid. I mean, jeez, Dory, on any other day with any other shark, she'd be dead. I can't read human! Well then, we gotta find a fish that can read this! Hey, look! Shark! Guys! Guys, guys! No, Dory! Hey, that's mine! Give Dory! Me. Cut Give me! Ow! Oh, oh, yeah. Are you okay? Ow, ow, I'm ow. so sorry. Hey, you really clocked me there. You know I'm bleeding? Oh. Ow, ow, ow. Dory, are you okay? Alright, we gotta shut the sharks off. How are we gonna do that? Uh, Dory gets a nosebleed. How does Dory get a nosebleed? She was pulling on the mask, and it hit her in the face. Why was she pulling on the mask? Because she was trying to get it away from me. She's, she's like a child, and she would- because she has short term- Because she's a plot tool, and she'll do whatever we want her to. Oh. There's no way out! There's gotta be a way to escape! Dory, help me find a way out! Oh my god, we're trapped! There's no way out of this room! There's gotta be a way out! Look, here's something! Yeah, except for that brightly lit escape hatch in the ceiling that should have been the most obvious thing ever. I wonder what that means. It's funny. It's spelled just like the word escape. Another example of being a plot tool would be having abilities and skills that are overly convenient. 
to the other characters or the demands of the plot. You can read? I can read? That's right, I can read! Well, well then here, read this down! As seen here. Oh no, it's blocked! You want that mask? Okay. No, 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 no! no! <laughs> Quick, grab the mask! Wait, go, go back. I need to get that mask! You want that mask? Okay. See, Dory does problem solve. Well then, we gotta find a fish that can read this. Hey, look, shark! Well, well she tries. Is it just an excuse to make something dramatic happen? Oh, no! Grab it! Probably. So, oh, it doesn't count. Th that's how desperate I am, looking for some way in which the characters are actually controlling anything going on. Dory pushed a lever! Eureka! Careful of that hammer. You know, at least the plot waits until they're conscious to try and start killing them again. It's like they're waiting by their beds. Oh, he's awake. No! Hey, what you doing? I've lost the mask. My only chance of finding my son, now it's gone! Alright, Dory, your friend's having a breakdown. What are you gonna do? Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dory, no singing. Patronize him and hand him the answer. That's the way. Dory, you've gotta be the shittiest friend ever. You know, you know what? Screw it. If, if I'm Marlin and I'm grief stricken over a missing family member and I have a friend who I just met with not a problem in the world come up to me and go, Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. Who's having a bad day? Oh, yes, you are. I'd punch them as hard as I could. That's not a friend. If you have a friend do that, you can punch them. You have my permission. That's not a friend. I mean, f what the hell, Dory? And, and wait a minute. What is this? Why are we watching Dory think? Ooh, what's Dory gonna do? How's Dory gonna get out of this? She's not the one with the problem here! But that's the movie we're watching. There's nobody here with any serious issues. Look, Dory's here. The emotional investment of a piece of chalk. I mean, Pixar must have decided that their audience would be too bored to death watching a movie about an emotionally damaged father, and they just stuck Dory in there so everyone could just skip to dessert. So he's just a free ticket to not having to care about anything. Yay! Uh, I'm sorry, but if you could just bring a little closer, I kinda need the light. That's great. Keep it right there. Just read it! Okay, okay. Mr. Bossy. <laughs> it's funny, because she's stupid. I know Pixar doesn't want me to think that Dory is so stupid, so self-centered that she doesn't even see that her friend is about to be eaten. I know that's not what they're trying to tell me, so just... It, just... Have more fluff. Fluff! Fluff for everybody! What did the mask say? P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. <gasps> I remembered what it said! I usually forget things, but I remembered it that time! She remembered what it said! What does that mean? Does it mean anything? I, I, Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. If you ask where I'm going, I'll tell you that's where I'm going. I'm going to Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. If you ask where I'm going, Sherman 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Where? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to just be this ball of raging hate towards Dory, but I know people that do that. And I want to kill them. Again, I don't get tired of it, okay, Sherman. Right. Uh huh? Here's the thing. Uh huh. It's just, you know, I, I just can't afford any more delays, and you're one of those fish that cause delays. You mean you don't like me? No, of course I like you. It's because I like you, I don't want to be with you. It's a complicated okay. emotion. I, I see she's crying. Oh, cry. So, I'm assuming her feelings have been hurt? It's a complicated emotion. <laughs> Oh, don't cry. I like you. Hmm. Wow. Why, why don't I care? In fact, it's funny. I'm feeling the impulse to laugh at Dory crying. 
Maybe it's because it's not actually crying. No, of course I like you. It's because I like you. I it's fakey clown crying. I, I mean, they wouldn't want us to empathize with her feeling rejected or anything. That's not what Dory's here for, remember? Hey, you! Well, well, if it isn't my favorite swarm of assholes. Lady, is this guy bothering you? That's a good question. What does Dory think of how Marlon's treating her? Um, I don't remember. Were you? We'll never know. Hey, do you guys know how I can Look, get to pal, peace? we're talking to the lady, not you. Hey, hey, you like impressions? Where's the butter? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Games! I love games! Yeah, let's play a game. I mean, we weren't doing anything important. It's not like there's a child missing. <laughs> But you get the idea. Marlon isn't backing down and letting Dory have fun, which creates a clear parent-child kind of dynamic. I mean, notice how Dory doesn't get to turn around and tell Marlon off herself. It's um, a swordfish. Oh, hey, clown boy, let the lady guess. Why not let Dory do that? Let her stand up for herself. Just a quick, no, 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 let me do it. Would have rendered a much clearer connection to Marlon's treatment of Nemo. Would also give Dory something to do than just, you know, float there like she's not actually involved in anything. I'll tell you later, the way you oh, they're good. But somebody please give me directions! What's that what I played? Give me directions! Yes. According to Finding Nemo, in wanting to find his son as fast as possible, Marlon is being a selfish, attention-seeking little prick let's all mock and laugh at him. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean you! I'm serious! Blah, 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 me, me, blah, 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 me, me, me. It's like, yay, let's play games! You don't mind, do you? Like, well, actually, my son is missing. Alright, look, you selfish prick. We're gonna play games. I know you think the world is all about you, but right now, we're playing games. Thank you. Oh, hey, what's the matter? What on earth could be the goddamn matter, Dory? Maybe if these characters actually had any time to empathize with one another, she would know the situation is not one that invites being pointed and laughed at. I am miles from home with a fish that can't even remember her own name. Boy, I bet that's frustrating. Yeah, meanwhile, my son is out there. And just in case, nobody was sure whether or not we're supposed to take anything Marlin is saying seriously, the asshole fish have to mock him to his back. Thanks for that, guys. Because no fish in this entire ocean is going to help me. Well, I'm helping you. What is that? A, a guilt trip now? She's helping. Is she really? Let's recap. She's only pushed him into danger, nearly gotten the both of them killed, not once, but twice. Trivialized his entire cause, wasted his time, laughed in his face, annoyed the living bejesus out of everyone. He should be great. We should all. Be grateful. Where would we be without- I? you know what? I can think of a thousand ways in which we could actually appreciate Dory, and they all involve establishing her as an actual character, a actually relating to her as a person. The, the, the film's trying to manipulate appreciation for a character that hasn't done anything but dick around and act to the plot's every convenience. Maybe if she spent less time doing the protagonist thinking for him, and more time on her own development, we could actually discuss Dory's contributions to the story. Go easy on him, he's lost his son. They could have fleshed Dory out. They could have given these two something to talk about. I mean, Marlon lost his family, so did Dory. Discuss! I mean, Marlon is afraid of being alone. Surely Dory can relate to that. As it is, neither of them have any means by which to empathize with the other. They are total opposites. A realistic guy with problems being judged against the unrealistic fantasy of being able to live happily and carefree despite those problems. Close enough, okay, buddy? That's not fair to either character. It's not fair to Marlon because it's completely dismissive to the fact that sometimes you have to take shit seriously in life. I'm serious! Blah, blah, blah. Me, me, blah. And it's not fair to Dory because she's completely dehumanized and infantilized in order to shoehorn her into this idealized, unrealistic concept. It's an adult with adult problems being compared to a child with child problems. Not even. No problems. Yes. When you come to this trench, swim through it, not over it. I'll remember. Come on, we're gonna swim over this thing. Whoa, whoa, partner. It's got death written all over it. Come on, trust me on this. Trust you. Yes, trust. It's what friends do. Guys, I'm all for Dory standing up for herself and demanding that Marla start treating her like an adult. But that's not the dynamic you've created. Dory's here as a Nemo proxy, 
and we're watching Marlon basically try to parent her so that we can draw connections to how he needs to improve as a father. And may I remind that Dory has not proven that she is worthy of any trust. Tag along with sharks, swim into a dark cavern, those were all her ideas. All those ideas turned out to be really dangerous, they almost died. So what, she just gets to mindlessly blunder around and putting everyone else's lives in danger, but then we have to listen to her sudden onset of random wisdom? That's not the way it works! Come on, trust me on this. Trust you. Yes, trust, it's what friends do. That's not the way trust works! I mean, why? Because she's being serious for once. Oh, everyone stop what they're doing and pay attention. Dory has decided to be an adult for this scene. I mean, unless this is actually a turning point for her, and the story's actually going to commit to this as her personal growth. Look, something shiny! Where? Oh, it just swam over the trench. Come on, we'll follow it. Okay. Bail. You see, she's too valuable as a gag generator. She's funnier just being an airhead. We couldn't actually ask people to take her seriously.